What I have today is a bit unusual for my channel, an oscilloscope. It's the Phineasy, Phineasy, D-S-O-T-C-3, and it will cost you about $65 or £65 at Amazon prices. It's funny how the GBP price for electronics always seems to be the same in numbers as the USD price, even though the exchange rate as of today is $1.25 to the pound. Oh, well. Anyway, pounds or dollars, 65 is in the fun zone. You can buy this on a whim, and you don't need to tell your significant other. You'll only need to explain away the time you spend playing with it. So in the past, I've been an electronics enthusiast. I'd say a dabbler, but a serious dabbler. I did take a couple of electronics modules at university, but for me, too much theory, too little practice, and I had to learn breadboarding and soldering for myself. Theory is good, but when your self-designed amplifier is oscillating at bat frequencies, it's practical skills that you need. And an oscilloscope, because you need to see it, because you can't hear it. So I have an oscilloscope. Dual beam, 20 megahertz, a proper oscilloscope, I'd call it. Dual beam, dual trace, I'll leave that for another video. I learned oscilloscopes at school, and you do have to learn them. Here's what I had on my bench. What's wrong? I'll get a computer readout. Try to activate cutoff. Right. Yes, you saw that right. Thunderbirds. It's a tiny but real oscilloscope. And so, even tinier, very much tinier, is the Fenursi, Fenursi, DSO TC3. The reason it can be so tiny is that it has an LCD screen. Old style oscilloscopes have a cathode ray tube, which is long compared to the CRT in a TV, so that the waveform displayed isn't stretched or distorted. So, old style oscilloscopes, big. Especially the one old vacuum tube model we had at school in the physics lab which had its own trolley, but we weren't allowed to use it, only the teacher. Anyway, 65 quid to have your own oscilloscope. Bargain. And I have to say that the DSO TC3 isn't just an oscilloscope. It's a function generator, sine waves, square waves, that kind of stuff. And a component tester? It's a very clever component tester. Well, compared to what we had in the olden days. It'll recognize the component you're testing. Resistor, capacitor, transistor, NPN, PNP, JFET, MOSFET, as Arthur C. Clarke is known to have said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Oh, and it will identify your infrared remote control. Unbelievable. But it's the oscilloscope function I'm most interested in. And as an audio enthusiast, which is why you're watching my channel, probably so are you. So what can we test for with an oscilloscope? The Fenersi DSO TC3, which by the way is single trace, hard to call it a beam without a CRT, 
but for the price, surely that's what anyone would expect. Well, the first thing you're going to do is run a sine wave through your amplifier and see what level it clips. Oh, sine wave. You can download one from the jolly old internet. How you get it into your amp, I'll leave that up to you. Technically, you should be running your amp into a dummy load. But if not, well, you're just having fun. I'm going to test a headphone amplifier I happen to have lying around into a dummy load of similar impedance to my own headphones. So, here I have a cheap but useful function generator. I've put my function generator on my old scope before, so I know that it's clean, clean enough. I'm going to feed it into the amp using a BNC to jack cable. Actually, I'm using a jack adapter on an RCA plug, but that's the detail. I've plugged a rather untidily soldered 33 ohm dummy load into the headphone output. My soldering used to be good, very good, I'd say, but where I am now seems to be one of the results of advancing age and extra strong reading glasses. <laughs> From that, I'm using the probe that came with the DSO TC3 to get it into the scope. A small point, the probe has a standard BNC connector. BNC, Bayonet Neil Konstelman. <laughs> Unnecessary knowledge, perhaps. The DSO TC3 has MCX connectors, and there's one adapter supplied. Six pound for another adapter that I'd used just once is why I couldn't test whether the DSO's function generator can be used at the same time as the oscilloscope. I wouldn't really want to do that anyway because I'd like to see the settings of the function generator while I'm oscilloscoping. So here we have my function generator connecting directly to the Finercy. I've taped them down because it's easier to film. I'll switch the function generator on. It starts at 100 kHz, which is way too high for what I need, although the Finercy can handle it. So I minus that down, then move the cursor to the thousands position, then select 1000, 1 kHz. I'll switch the Finercy on and select the oscilloscope function. I'll run the sine wave. This is coming up way too big, so I'll adjust the sensitivity downwards. Oops, wrong way. That's more like it. There we go, that's fine. Then I'll go to the time base. I'll have a little play. Then I'll settle here. And that's it, a nice clean sine wave. Well, reasonably clean, but I can now take some measurements. Well, the Finercy has done this for me already. Peak to peak is 2.68 volts, RMS 0.95 volts, frequency 1 kilohertz dead on. I could switch this display off, and I will do that later. I can count the divisions, 500 millivolts per division times about 5 divisions equals about 2.5 volts peak to peak and about five divisions again horizontally times 200 microseconds gives me one millisecond, which is the period of the sine wave. Divide that into one gives me the frequency one kilohertz. You may notice that the sine wave isn't as static as it could be. Some noise, some side-to-side -side jitter. I don't see this when I use my Hamek oscilloscope, but I have seen it in other videos testing this item. I'll leave that there. What the DSO will do that my Hamek won't is be a storage scope. Traditional scopes work with continuous waveforms, but when the waveform is gone, it's gone. I didn't find the storage capability of the Finercy all that flexible, but perhaps better instruction in the manual would have helped. I've put a link in the description where someone used it to test switch bounce, but unfortunately, not in video. Now, about my amp and at what level it clips. I'm going to set the output level of the amp to full, then I'll increase the level from my function generator going into the amp. I'll need to adjust the sensitivity of the scope as I go. At some point, the tips of the waveform will level out, which indicates clipping. Clipping, of course, creates harsh distortion, which audiophiles never want, but music mastering engineers seem to love. That's a different story. <laughs> Here we have the function generator as before, connecting to my headphone amplifier, which is the Fozzy SK01, both channels. On the output, I have a dummy load of 33 ohms on both channels, so I can max it out. The oscilloscope probe is attached to one channel. That's all I need for now, although if I were testing for real, I'd test one channel, then the other, or use my dual-beam Hamegg scope. 
From the headphone amplifier, we go to the Finercy. OK, let's pump up the volume. As we can see, we get to a point where the tips of the waveform aren't rounded as they should be. Normally, I'd expect the clipping to be horizontal, but it doesn't matter because clearly I've gone too far anyway. I'll back off. Let's get the measurements. We have 13.59 volts peak to peak and the important RMS of 4.81, from which we can get the average power. Power is voltage squared divided by resistance, and my trusty calculator gives me 0 0.7 watts, or 700 milliwatts per channel. This is interestingly different to the published specification. So I reseated all the connectors and used my Hamex scope with a different probe. Same results. So I would be interested in what others, perhaps with better equipment than mine, can come up with. Anyway, this is why you should have an oscilloscope. It's all part of the fun. Oh, and yes, I checked the load resistors with one from the same batch, with the Finercy. Close enough. I think this has been fun, and I could show you some more pretty waveforms from my function generator. But I'll show you something useful with a square wave. Now let's have some fun with a square wave. This is the same setup. I'll stop the sine wave on the function generator, change to square wave, and start it up again. Previously, I've had the tone controls of the SK01 switched out. Now I'll switch them in. There's an interesting change there which perhaps tells us why tone controls or EQ should be switched out when not in use. I'll simulate the effect of a high pass filter by turning down the low frequency control. So we see tilting of what were the horizontal parts of the square wave. We expect this because a horizontal trace on an oscilloscope indicates DC. DC is effectively zero hertz. So if we cut the lower frequencies, we can't get that DC component and the trace tilts. Good. Let's try the high frequency control, substituting for a low pass filter. This, again, is what we expect. A rounding of the sharp corners, which is where all the high harmonics hang out. Maths enthusiasts will probably be saying, it's a lot more complicated than this. Well, of course it is. There are other degradations as well that you can check for, but I think this is enough for you to play with for now. And you'll enjoy searching YouTube and the web for all kinds of things that can go wrong with audio. Just to be complete, this oscilloscope isn't just for audio. It's specified up to 500 kilohertz, half a megahertz. So if your interest is in these rarefied frequencies that we can't hear, the DSOTC1 will be your friend. So time for conclusions. Will the Finercy DSOTC3 replace my traditional Hamburg analog cathode ray oscilloscope? No. If I'm going to take things seriously, I prefer a larger workspace, larger controls, a steadier display, and of course, dual beams. But I lose the measurements, and I have to count divisions myself and use my calculator. And then the results are approximate. So I might use the Finercy for more precise measurements if I need them. But is it fun? Well, yes, it is. And for anyone's first experience with an oscilloscope, it's great and not too expensive. And don't forget the other functions, component testing, function generator, and check out your infrared remote control. I'm going to try that later with my aircon remote, which is falling apart, and I'll soon need a replacement. Finercy sent me the DSO TC3, but other than that, there's no payment from them, so I can say what I like, and I've said it. See you soon.